mainly because they don't care about treasure crews and they can beat force of will. It's an island and it's a ponder. Take a look at a couple of cards here. Ponder, Volcanic Island, and a Flooded Strand. The options here for Friedman. You see his hand. He's got a brainstorm and a couple of lands over there. So it doesn't look like the best hand we've ever seen. Ponder's going to try to fix it up, though. Ben, are we keeping? We are. OK. Flooded Strand, pass the turn back. Ben on the Mulda 6 here. Looking a lot like a control deck, just some lands, some fetch lands, and a couple cantrips. Doesn't really know what his hand is yet, but he doesn't know what his opponent's playing. Mm, I thought he's. And that will really hurt this hand. Yep. The fact that Nathan can take the brainstorm out of it turns Ben's hand of brainstorm and fetch lands into a stack of fetch lands. Snapcaster Mage, the Flooded Strand, the Arid Mesa, and then just the island. So if I'm Nathan in this spot, I just want to snag that brainstorm. We have the uh, the pleasure of knowing what's on top of Ben's deck, which I believe is the other copy of Ponder. Yeah, keep in mind that Ben's fairly seasoned here. He almost certainly put his best card that he's on the three, not in his hand, but on top of his deck. There is a Ponder. We're casting this one now. There's so a couple cards. There's some disguising here. Ben doesn't really know what deck his opponent's on just yet. There's no real dead giveaway, right? Just a Swamp and a Thought Seeds could be a lot of decks. It could be Jund, it could be Salt Eye. Doesn't always feel like a reanimator deck, as Ben's going to keep and put a top into play. Right, so if he knew it was reanimator, Ben may have, for example, opted to keep the Swords to Plowshares that he's now about to shuffle away. Yeah, sacrificing and shuffling away with the Arid Mesa. Dig up a land here. Got himself a Tundra. Probably deploy the top and then move forward. His shields are down, though. Remember, Reanimator is one of the faster combo decks. It could make a Gristle Brand as early as next turn. So there's a Tundra. There's your top. And it'll be Moneymaker's turn here in just a moment. Let's see if he can get a big creature into play this turn. Deck is certainly capable of Drew a Ponder. Looks like he does have a copy of Careful Study, Animate Dead as well in his hand, but not positive he has a monster. And because of those mana costs, it looks like a turn three is what he's going to be going for. Nathan sacrificing a delta going down to 17. There is an underground sea. And with the decline of the shardless salt high deck, it's possible that Ben can know what deck Nathan's on just by looking at the lands right now. Yeah, that's true. There aren't too many decks that play basic swamp and underground sea. Be, Storm does, Reanimator does. There's a Ponder. It feels like, you know, if I'm Ben right now, I feel like I'm probably playing against Reanimator. Or excuse me, I feel like I'm playing against Storm, not Reanimator, because Reanimator has just been on such a decline. It does feel like Storm. I'm gonna shuffle here. Yeah. I mean, the Delver deck, for example, the Sultai Delver deck doesn't play Basics generally. Mm -hmm. So Basic Swamp is actually a bit of a giveaway. And Esper Stoneblade has really fallen out of favor. Yeah, everyone's moved to the Jeskai version. Careful study of the draw. Pass it back. Moneymaker did not find a land. Ultimately, I think, with a pretty weak turn there. So he, he was hoping for more. Bang, it's been the top, it looks like, on his upkeep here. Force of Wilma and the cards he's found. There's also a Stoneforce Mystic there as well. Third card's a Flooded Strand. He's going to take the Force of Will and give himself a little bit of protection against whatever the heck Nathan is up to. And you see Ben starting to learn what he's supposed to be doing here. He could have, in some matchups, gotten the land, played gotten the Mystic, played Stoneforge Mystic that turn. But whatever he's playing against, he, he, you have to think he knows it's combo because he went and got Force of Will and said, Stoneforge can happen later. This, I might need this card. This is the dead giveaway. Careful study, there's only one deck that does that. And see, for Nathan here, he did find a Gristle Brand on that careful study. So we are, this is a go. Yeah, you know, in situations like this, depending on what his grip looks like, and you get a decent look of it there at home, you discard a Gristle Brand, you discard something else, and now you just start putting him to the test. Animate dead, exhume, reanimate. Well, it looks like Nathan actually has a decision here. So he has one of his main decks, two show and tells in hand. And if he 
doesn't discard Gristlebrand, he can first try to show and tell Gristlebrand, and then if it doesn't work, he can try to careful study, reanimate dead the Gristlebrand. He does have another copy of careful study in his hand. I think that's what he's going to go for because he doesn't have counter magic to fight with. He just needs to, you know, keep trying more spells. Benning a sacrifice. The Flooded Strand not entirely thrilled at what he saw when he spun the top, so this will give him a new look. A lot of great card selection for Ben Friedman. Yeah, the, the show and tells and reanimate are always interesting to me because, you know, what has become kind of the industry standard at this point is you play two copies of show and tell in the main deck, and then there's the tension that we just saw, which is, am I supposed to discard the thing, or am I supposed to keep it in my hand? Am I supposed to discard the show and tell? <laughs> like, yeah. it's always kind of difficult, actually. Since Ben doesn't have a Stoneforge Mystic, he's shuffled that one away. There's another one with a dig through time now on top of his deck. At some point, Ben's going to want to find a clock here. Well, this kind of game just doesn't favor him, right? If he's just going to do this sort of thing. Like, you can't counter Nathan's stuff forever. Nathan has a lot of stuff to counter. Yeah. That's one thing about Reanimator is the deck is very redundant. You look at the number of the number of ways to gr Gristlebrand into play, for example. It has Show and Tell in, in two, one Animate Dead. It has two Exhumes. It has four copies of Reanimate. You'd have to counter all of them. Yep. Ben will draw. Looks like he's going to play the island. Yeah, yeah, Snapcaster Mage, Force of Will, and Dig Through Time remaining. The cards of Snapcaster just ponders and brainstorms. Some little bit of dissonance there with the Dig Through Time and the Snapcaster Mage. Eh, it's not awkward. It's not too bad if there's one card he really wants. He, he just has to decide which card he wants with Snapcaster and then not delve that one. It's deep in the tank. Might be considering drawing a card with the top, maybe digging, but looks like he's just going to pass the turn back. Nathan's going to sacrifice a Scalding Tarn, get land out of his deck. It's a 16. There's an island. A lot of more basics in Nathan's deck, actually. He has two swamps and two islands, along with just three underground seas, and then a bunch of fetch lands. This deck's able to play around Wasteland pretty well. She's going to untap. Draw a copy of Days. It's not as live right now. Ben's counter spells don't cost mana. We see here he wants as many business spells as possible. He's going to start with Show and Tell. I think this, I mean... You just can't let something. it resolve. Yeah, yeah, you can't let it resolve. It's too good. Probably he's going to pitch the Snapcaster, dig through time. There's something he can do on the end step here. Go find more counter magic for the next fight. Yep. So there is force removing snap. Bang goes down to 17. Let's see if Nathan has a force of his own back or anything. I mean, we saw him draw days, but we know that's not going to fight anything. So I think show and tell is just going to be countered. Yep. Sacrifice delta. Go down a little bit lower. Probably sort up a blue source. There that is. So you can guess the careful study that you mentioned. Yeah, so now that Kirsalban's not coming out of his hand, he's going to go ahead and try to get it out of the graveyard. But because he's taking his time here, he's allowing Ben to, to assemble a lot of counter magic. Yep. Ben's hand was not particularly, was not well placed to fight this. It was a dig through time. That was easy. Turn 40, he's already got six cards in the graveyard. Well, that's legacy. <laughs> if all your cards cost are fetches and cost one and zero. The force, oh wow. It's really tough to pass up those blue cards, jeez. It's it's an, an okay dig through time. He can go force plus blue card. It looks like that's what he's going to do. He takes counterbalance as his blue card. Then you should just see, well, if he can spin the top into a third blue card, then he can make the counterbalance. Yeah, it's like the driver's seat. That was a really, really good dig. Man, study's going to resolve. Entomb, along with the Delta. 
So might have made Crystal discard a couple of cards here to careful study. It'll be Crystal Brand in the land. Four lands is plenty for him. He has an anime dead as a reanimation spell, but I don't know if that's going to resolve. Ben's going to spin his top. There's a bolt, a bolt, and a fluster storm. So a bunch of ones, but he's got another blue card now. He does have another blue card. He doesn't have a shuffle effect, so he's going to have to draw those lightning bolts. Uh, good news is he does get to assemble countertop. Yep, there's top. Remember, this is oh, out of a Stoneblade deck in yeah. one. So this is this is the innovation that Ben is trying this weekend. And it's not like they have a million tops or a million counterbalances. They have three counterbalances and two tops, him and Majors do. At first glance, it looks like a Miracles deck. Remember, there are no copies of Miracles in Ben's deck. There's a Daze. It's about as good as Daze is ever going to get. It does take Ben off a Divining Top activation. That's about all it did there. There's a land. This will be Animate Dead. For what it's worth, it is very hard for a Reanimator deck to break out of a Counterbalance lock. You know, part of the appeal of the deck is their spells are so cheap. Right. And you may be noticing, if you look at Nathan Moneymaker's hand, he's drawn a copy of Sire of Insanity. Now, outside of the three Lotus Petals, he does not have any red <laughs> mana sources. He's actually getting reasonably close to hard casting Sire. But he needs a Lotus Petal. He has to get a Lotus Petal if he yep. wants to do that. Forcible number two. Take care of Animate Dead. No Crystal Brand for Nathan. You can see Nathan's hand. You mentioned the Sire. The other card's in Entomb. Pass the turn back. And Nathan was just a little slow out of the gates here with Reanimator. He had a window, but it seems to have closed. Two bolts now. Swords of Plowshares are the cards. I think Ben's going to draw the swords here. See if he wants to spin the top now or just wait. He's just going to wait. Moneymaker going to untap and draw. It's a copy of Days. Might be the worst draw in his deck as far as an actual non-land card is concerned. Maybe the maybe the big creatures are worse right now, but there are a lot of bad draws in this deck. There's a Ponder. Now oh, Ben needs the win condition. Yeah, he doesn't have a way to win yet. Remember, he was actually very... He had a lot of chances to take a Stoneforge Mystic and passed all of them by. It turns out to be paying off here. Now that he has his lockdown, he can... He will have to find one again, but he has a lot more time to do it. Flusterstorm and two bolts. That's what Friedman's looking at. Gonna take one of those. Pass the turn back. Brainstorm the draw. We know that's not resolving. I think Nathan knows it too. He's just gonna pass the turn back. Friedman's going to spin the top. There's Lightning Bolt to counter the Brainstorm. Here are three cards. Ben puts the new card on top pretty quick. It's a copy of Scalding Tarn, though he might draw the Lightning Bolt instead. Nope, takes the Tarn. And there's a the land. And it's interesting. I think their theory here is that the countertop lock right now doesn't really require Miracles cards to be effective. It's just another piece in this kind of Jeskai mid-range toolbox. Copy of Treasure Cruise added here along with the two bolts. That's the fresh card at the top. Friedman will draw. He'll take the bolt. Pass the turn back. Just a land of passing the turn back here by Moneymaker. Friedman spinning the top. Treasure Cruise, bolt, and swords. Yeah, Freeman's just found a bunch of different one drops, but the question is what what can Moneymaker do here? I don't know how he breaks free. Well, he does. He can get a monster in his hand. He can maybe show and tell one into play. Right now, Ben doesn't have the ability to counter that. But you're right, most of his deck costs one. Countertop is a very good lock against him. Spin it again. Ah, Batter Skull. <laughs> a way to win the game. Batter Skull, Treasure Cruise, among the things that Ben has found here. Put him back. Not yet. Well, his Stone Blade 
miracles hybrid certainly moves at the pace of miracles. It's, you know, this reminds me of one of those games where you're like, yeah, I think he's won, but he's not winning. He's just sitting there. I wouldn't say it has much closing speed. That's for sure. Because Nathan Cern is our draw. Look at my card. Put it face down. Go. As stoic as he can be. Ben's turns are take my sweet old time. Not going to move too fast. I've got you in the hardest of locks. Moneymaker draw. Place it face down. Oh, we got to take a look now. Something may have changed. Careful study. Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, anything that costs one is, is never going to work here. Nope. Exhum, do you have a two? Ben does not. I think Ben has a Flusterstorm, though. And this is where Nathan playing that one is really going to hurt him. Because yep. if he had just started on Exhum, this would have worked. Well, it would have forced Ben to crack some fetch lands. Yeah, I mean, Ben's got some redraws with the counterbalance trigger on the stack. He's got two fetch lands in play. So I think Ben would rather not cast his Flusterstorm if he doesn't have to. But he's got the safety net. The twos in Ben's deck. He has four copies of Stoneforge Mystic. He has one more Snapcaster Mage. He has an Umazawa's Jite. He has two more copies of Counterbalance. So that's a total of eight cards he can find here. Well, nine if you include the one copy of Counterspell. Uh, with these redraws, that puts him in a decent chance to find one. I'm going to try one more time. Spin it to win it. That's the plan here for Friedman. We'll see if he finds what he's looking for here on another attempt with the counterbalance trigger on the stack. This is always the frustrating thing when you're playing against a counterbalance. So, you know, it's clear that Ben's looking for a two. And then if he doesn't find it, he's going to be like, oh, okay, then it's Storm. <laughs> yeah. like, you don't know if he's actually called it or whether he just doesn't want to spend his counter spell. It's, it's always a sweat except for the person doing it. He's like, oh, I, I have a panic button if this doesn't work. Ponder, brainstorm, force of will. Well, force of will is another panic button. Yeah, it's pretty. What's nice about Flusterstorm is that Flusterstorm is more or less uncounterable. Remember, each of those one mana has a different copy of a, the spell, so it's very good in a counter war. But yeah, there was a careful study earlier this turn, so this is a storm of three. Yeah, I like this play a lot by Ben. And I don't know if Ben, he's lightning bolting here. I'm not. Positive if he. So the reason he's doing this is because to play around a force of will. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Yeah. Because he would be able to go pay pay force of will your third fluster storm, but now that's not an option anymore. Now it's four copies of yeah. fluster storm. I like that play a lot by Ben. Pretty heads up on his side. And there's fluster storm. This is four copies of fluster storm. You see him counting the spells right now. It says my lightning bolt, your careful study, the exhum, and now fluster storm. Got to pay four. So if your plan was pay two and the force of one, that's not going to work. I think they only counted to three and Nathan might force here. What do we do if that happens? Oh, taken care of. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Pass the turn back. Friedman going to spin. He knows those top cards. Brainstorm, Ponder, Force of Will. He's looking at a hand with Treasure Cruise, Bolt, and Swords. Remember, Ben's win cons here. He, though you haven't seen very many of them. He has three copies of True Name Nemesis, four copies of Stoneforge Mystic, and then the two standard equipment, Batterskull, Andrew Mazawa's GTA. I was convinced he didn't have any win conditions. So, he's just going to spin his opponent to death. Maybe find like a Nephalia Drawn Yard or something. He's going to Treasure Cruise now. Aha! Found one. All right. It's winning time. Now, to be fair, he may need to hang on to that guy so he can <laughs> brainstorm and put the two back on top <laughs> in case Moneymaker goes for another exhum. I mean, you wouldn't want to rush things. Yeah, well, he's certainly not going to. He's not casting it. I hope that's the reason. He's it, like, oh, I, I don't want to. Got to make sure I counter that next. Slow Zoom. and steady wins the race. Oh, two copies of Stoneforge Mystic for, here for Ben. All right, well, he can probably cast the second Stoneforge. 
<laughs> so that he can still brainstorm back the first one. But he didn't even draw it. He, he can also wait a turn before drawing the next Stoneforge. See, if he played Stoneforge now, he can't get an equipment, because then he shuffles away his two. Yeah. So he'll just give Moneymaker maybe another turn here. Oh, he's casting a spell. It's a Ponder. Ponder, Ponder, and a Snapcaster Mage. He's found a better two than the Stone Forge. He has a cast Snapcaster Mage. And now, see him rearrange with that Stone Forge Mystic. Is it time? I believe it is, but we'll see. For someone who doesn't like doing anything, you sure want Ben to do something. What happened to the He's old Matthias? Where did the old Matthias go? Well, he, his deck has win cons, so if you have <laughs> win cons, you should play them. <laughs> I think he's going to play one. Yeah. Yes. You know, he has to turn the corner. So Eventually, yes, he does. You are not wrong. I like it when the win con is them conceding. <laughs> it's a great. They can't take it anymore. They're like, they're like, this is stupid. <laughs> You're never going to let me play. Forceful removing a day is going to take care of Stoneforge Mystic. That's countered. We'll go back no to Moneymaker's second thought here. Ben has two more Stoneforges on top of his deck, if you recall. He'll... Gladly trade that one off. Here's an exhum. And this is just going to be a flip. Bang. No, sir. Perhaps a snappy? Spin the top instead. Just to be sure. Two stone brainstorm, forges and a stone brainstorm. Forge. Yep. Oh, he's not even going to draw the stone forge. He's going to draw a brainstorm. Why would you draw a stone forge? You can draw a brainstorm. Even I, the anti blue mage, would rather have a brainstorm. I mean, it's basically drawing all three of them when you draw the Brainstorm. There we go. What's the next new card? Batterskull. Nope. Well, he can draw two of those if he draws the Stoneforge. Yeah. That's the Batterskull into his hand. Remember, that pile there, the Stoneforge next to the Counterbalance, is not in play right now. That's there his graveyard. Is. Yep. Ben knows the Batterskull's there, so he'll take it. He'll shuffle up his deck. And here we go. Looks like Ben will close out the game. He's going to work his way towards dealing the last 11 points of damage. He's got Nathan and one of the horror locks I've seen here on SCG Live. And what'll be interesting with Ben Friedman's Stoneblade deck is if he makes top eight here. Remember, there's a lot of Miracles decks poised to make top eight. And Ben is playing a lot like a Miracles deck, but the question is, can he out Miracles an actual Miracles deck? That's the big question. We've seen Brian Brunduin play Miracles with Stoneforge Mystic in it before, and Really, in a lot of ways, that's just what Ben is playing. Yep. There's a land. Yeah, I mean, this isn't, un you know, we think of top plus counterbalance, and this isn't unfamiliar territory for a non Miracles deck. Think of, you know, like next level blue, previous level blue, decks that just said, yeah, I just want the lock. Right. You know, you don't have to have Miracles in your deck. Bolt you. Before Avacyn Restored, there were people that played Counterbalance and Sensei's Divining Top. Yeah. That was a thing in Legacy. And then it was more of a question of, are the Miracles good? Snapcaster Mage. Yep, we're not playing anymore. Ben Frieden is going to win game number one here over Nathan Moneymaker. Jeskai Stoneblade up a game over Reanimator as we do turn our attention to the sideboard. We'll see what kind of spice Nathan has here. Nathan actually taking a, a different approach to sideboarding here. He's got three Pithing Needles, which are actually pretty good against Ben's deck. Three copies, excuse me, two copies of Jace the Mind Sculptor, two Swan Songs, two Surgical Extractions, two copies of Echoing Truth, a Thoughtseize and Ashen Rider, and then additional copies, additional targets, excuse me, in Blazing Archon and an Iona Shield of Amiria. I would probably want the additional discard spell. Yeah, Thoughtseize is great here. It's good for winning counter wars. And maybe Swan Song? So I really like Swan Song here, not just for the reason that it's good in a counter war counter fight, but it also counters counterbalance. And you've seen a countertop out of Ben. So it, yeah, it's not just to negate it can not just the instant or sorcery, it can also hit enchantments. I was thinking about winning counter wars, and then when you mentioned that it counters counterbalance, now I'm on board right away. Since that's a disaster for reanimator that if that's straight up play. turn two, I just play counterbalance yeah. is, is real bad for reanimator. What do we have on Ben's side? Well, on Ben's side, we have permission, and that's what you'd expect him to have. Three red blast effects, a split of one in red elemental blast and two pyro blast. He can become more of a control deck here. He has a third copy of Sensei's Divining Top, which if he likes counterbalance here, and I believe he does. I would think so. He'll board it in. 
Uh, other than things, two more copies of Flusterstorm, one more copy of Counterspell, and he can do a little bit of an equipment switch that Umazao's Jate can become a sort of Feast and Famine. Well, these players are going to sideboard and shuffle up for game number two here, and while we wait, we will talk about regionals that will be taking place in the winter on February 7th. Got all these sweet dates and locations announced, so hopefully we have one in your area that you can participate in on February 7th. Going to be a lot of fun, and for the first 200 players, they'll get this sweet, awesome, exclusive play mat. StarCityGames.com slash regionals for more information. This tournament's going to be a lot of fun over that Pro Tour weekend. And remember, this is part of the states and regional championships that StarCityGames.com is hosting. Two regional championships per year, two state championships per year, all of them taking place on Pro Tour weekends. This is going to be the winter one on February 7th. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be playing in mine. I just had a little bit of a drive from Seattle. Got to go down to the Portland area, but I don't mind. I want to play some Magic on my weekend off. I'm still taking a couple shots here at, uh, at if I'm not in D.C. I'll be playing mine. Okay. You got a, you got a PTU left or two? Have a Grand Prix left. Right? Have a Grand Baltimore? Have Baltimore left. I think Baltimore is still for DC. I Maybe it's for the next one, I though. I think you're right. It's, yeah, it's close. If it's for the next one, then, then no. Then I don't have DC. Oh, you're going to play anyway, though. Had some PTQ top eights this year. Didn't, com didn't convert them. Close, but no cigar. It must be nice to get to play in a PTQ. I, I don't know that feeling. It's I mean, been so long. Yes and no. It's, my, I mean, it's by as choice. nice as it is to top eight PTQ and not come, <laughs> not win it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I, I guess that's not the best feeling. I see an Eric Rill walking around. I don't know if that's good or bad. There's still a lot of time left in the round, so this could be a good thing for the Storm player. Ben's deck is interesting. Yeah, it's. It's like I said. It's it's interesting. It's new and I say it's a little bit new and a little bit old at the same time here. You know, yeah, we haven't seen these things in this configuration for a while. But the spe this is really, the spells are nothing new. You know, the, you see these all the time. It's this the kind of the mishmash, right? Of it being in this deck. That's that's what's kind of new. You expect, have, you expect top and counter balance to be in miracles, and that's it now. We haven't seen counter top. We've seen it a little bit outside of miracles. We've seen it being played in the sideboard of high tide. Yeah. Feeling Longmore has been trying that out recently. Right. Outside of that, I guess you don't see too much. But no, well, last weekend we saw actually the oh, Jeskai right. Delver deck. Yeah, yeah Bob. Yeah. Yep. They were playing, yeah, Bob Huang was playing it in his sideboard of his Jeskai Delver deck. Ended up going X and 2 and qualifying for the Pro Tour. Yeah. If you got 11th place on Breakers. Two copies of the same list meeting in X and 2 in the last yeah. round. It'd be kind of about starting to make its, make its way around along with top. It is pretty good. It is surprising that we haven't seen that card outside of Miracles more. Just because, again, if you given Magic's history and Counterbalance plus Top, it's just, you could put it a lot of different places. I remember <laughs> the Enduring Ideal deck that had that in it. It had just like, it had like naked Counterbalances. I think Paulo <laughs> Top 8 Brazil Nationals with that deck because I played it on Magic Online for a little while. It's just like Enduring Ideal, but you could just play a Counterbalance and like your, your spell numbers lined up quite a bit and you know, so it was just it was fine. for the random counter spells. Yeah, it was just fine. It was very yeah. frustrating for the opponent, which is understandable. So we have seen counterbalance or just top and other things, either side by side or just by themselves before. You know, if you want to talk about the rise of like counterbalance decks and infect decks, I, I have to think it correlates also to the fall of abrupt decay. If you want yeah. to talk about what legacies happened last month, boy, have we not seen an abrupt decay this weekend? And I don't know if I saw a single one all of Grand Prix New Jersey. We didn't. Wa I, I can't recall watching a match with them. But, that, you know, that's a card that's great against Infect and great against the card Counterbalance in particular. Think about a year ago, bug decks were, I mean, these bug and salty decks were just everywhere. Yeah. I Absolutely mean, everywhere. The biggest, I think the biggest loser of the Treasure Cruise printing has turned out to be Shardless Sultai. Yep. You know, its cool thing was that it could draw three cards, and now everybody, now he's no longer cool. Everybody does it. It's a thought sees. He's just, he's just hipster about drawing three now. <laughs> Very Portlandia. Uh-oh, this is the whammy. So Nathan had like this awesome turn, right? He wanted to go like Thought Seize You, cast and tomb, cast reanimate, put a big creature into play all in one turn. But Ben's hand is not going to allow that because he has multiple counter spells in Force of Will and Flusterstorm. So Force of Will and Flusterstorm for this turn. He has counter spell as well. 
Nathan, if he takes the Fluster Storm, can force Ben to burn Force of Will plus blue card. But even then, Ben's not in a terrible spot. He'll have fought a big counter war, cracked a couple of fetch lands, and then have this dig through time waiting. Ben's positioned pretty well here. And more importantly, he will have won that counter war. Right. That's the big thing, because if Nathan just does that, if he does exactly what you mentioned, which I, I think is you know, pretty reasonable. Have to get through the counter spell somehow. Yeah, that, he, he thinks he's out of gas and he has a top deck, but like you're in trouble and have the top deck anyway, so maybe you just put the pedal to the metal here. I think it's pretty clear that Snapcaster Mage is the Force of Will card in this hand. If you want to talk about, like, in terms of a counter war, what Ben's going to be pitching to force. It turns out he's going to pitch nothing to force as Nathan takes that one. I guess Nathan is saying I can work my way through Flusterstorm. Well, what the weakness with Ben's hand was is that it only had two lands. So what Nathan can do is he can set up a combo turn where maybe he doesn't have enough permission to get through double counterspell, but if Ben doesn't have the mana to play both counterspell and Flusterstorm, then Ben only effectively has one counterspell, and maybe Nathan can play through one. Unfortunately for Nathan, Ben's draw step was really good. It was a land? It was a force will. Well, I always love it when you take a card from them and then they draw the card you took. <laughs> that's your favorite? <laughs> it's, I mean, that's really frustrating. <laughs> it's like, oh. Ah, oh, that's my favorite think, when that happens. I think it's only more frustrating when you Vendillion clicks their card and then they draw the one you took. Because then it's just, oh, I, I might as well just not played it. Yeah, that's more of like a slap in the face than anything. Oh, you, you drew the... Card I made you put away. Here's a brainstorm. A couple cards drawn, Swan Song among them. That'll help him win the counter war if we can get to that point. The tough thing here, too, is we know we've got a lot of focus on Ben and just, you know, how he's stopping Nathan from doing things and spinning tops and putting counterbalances in play. The reason I don't talk about Nathan much here is because it's pretty straightforward. If he gets a big creature in play, it's over. Yeah. The game is over. Yeah, Ben's not fighting in a post Gristlebrand forward state. No. Probably can't beat that. I mean, extreme difficulty beating Sire of Insanity. He may be able to beat Gristlebrand if we're on turn 10. Sure. You know, he could he could let Nathan draw some cards. Maybe, maybe manage to get it off the board. I don't even know. I think if Gristlebrand hits, you're just done. There's ben never wants to C. go to that spot. No. He doesn't want any part of that battle. And I do like how Nathan's playing this. He's not going to fight through the permission. Instead, he's just going to... He's going to press his mana advantage. There's Noon 2. Shuffle, present, cast in tomb. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you want to fight over this or the reanimation spell, though Ben is reaching. So it looks like he's going to cast actual counter spell here. Well, yeah, he could Flusterstorm, which would get the Lotus Petal off of Nathan's side, but I think he wants Flusterstorm to be a hard counter when he chooses to go for it. So it will be the card counter spell. Nathan, none of that, though. He may think the coast is clear. He's going to swan song the counter spell, and he's going to be rewarded here. Well, Ben, sorry, he's not going to be rewarded here. This is not actually going to work because Ben has drawn a force of will since he got, in the meantime, since thoughts he's happened. Now, again, the question here is, do you fight over the Entomb or do you fight over the animation spell? So there's your It's stat. a guessing game. Which one does Nathan have a replacement for? Yep. Ben's giving it a look. He's brought the Force Will forward. Looks like he's casting it. I would say you fight over... Let's fight over the Entomb. There's fewer... What are there? There's fewer Entombs than there are Reanimates in his list, but it's about the same. Also, let that Swan Song resolve. Get that Derek Sheets token out there. He does never get enough prime time. We haven't seen that one in a while. Yeah. That, that is one of my favorite tokens. There's Force. What are we going to remove? Dig or Snap? I think you want the dig through time. I still think Snapcaster has Force of Will written on him. I guess because Nathan also has like this huge mana advantage, I could see Ben removing Flusterstorm here. Yeah, if you just don't think Flusterstorm's a card anymore, then sure, at least it pitches to Force. He's pretty hesitant, though though to do this right i mean ben's thinking just you know just how much of a card is this fluster storm well snapcaster is not a card at all you're not with two mana you just don't have time to snap something and if your intentions are to dig through time which they clearly are and i think ben chose right if i'm not mistaken the remaining two cards in nathan's hand are both reanimate so ben correctly picking the card to counter Ben Charles counterbalance. 
And here it goes. Yeah, in for two. I like how Nathan played this. I think he really timed that thought sees well. Ben did draw a force of will on the turn on a turn where Nathan needed him to not draw it. And Ben may pull away just like he did last game. It's not as easy right now. He doesn't have a Sensei's Divining Top, so the counterbalance is blind. He actually doesn't even have a counter... He has, outside of Flustrum, he doesn't really have a counter spell. Nathan could just go for it. Yeah, no, he can still get there. Now here's a Ponder. That's big. Ponder will probably find a land. It... Yeah, we'll find lands for Ben. And once Ben starts... His deck starts rolling, once he can cast cards like Dig Through Time, things are real bad for Nathan. It's a really good setup there by Ben, too. He took the land, put a Brainstorm on top, and then put a land underneath it. So if Nathan does look to cast Reanimator, Careful Study, or Brainstorm like he just drew... That's not going to work. Ben knows Stop Carver's deck can't flip it over fast enough. Really good sequencing there from Friedman. Definitely sets up his deck on the right number. He will, I, and it was just about setting up because his end step play was dig through time anyway. Yep. So he wasn't ever going to draw whichever card he put on top. Take a look at the top seven of Brainstormer Planes, a Counterbalance, a Tundra, a Top, a Ponder, Another and a Top. top. Well, quickly picks the top. That much <laughs> yeah, is clear. That one's easy. Can't pass that up. Maybe a land. He could use another land. He could also take a brainstorm, because that's basically a land. Sure. We can also let him have some fun with putting cards back on top for counterbalance, too, in case mm. anything goes wrong. It's really hard to not take brainstorm. Brainstorm's whatever you want it to be, and it improves the other cards in your hand. It's just better than a card. Some would say it's the best card in Legacy. I would agree with them. I'd be one of those people. I just want to beat it, that's I all. I think there are other... You could you could say Wasteland, but that's probably incorrect. After last week? Yeah. No. The decline in Wasteland is so sharp. It's interesting. So, Force of Will may be the most important card in Legacy, in that, but Brainstorm is probably the best card. Maybe I can make that statement. Like, Brainstorm is the best card, but if we were to remove, I think... Force of Will does the best job of keeping the format honest. I guess it would be the least fun format ever if Force of Will wasn't right. Right. Yeah. If you remove Force of Will, just like the yeah. format falls apart and yeah. people, everybody starts belting each other and, and it's just oops off spelling oh each gosh. other. It would be horrible. It was so bad. What do we got here? Maybe a little containment yeah. priest action. Yep. But I mean, you bore sometimes you board out your Force of Wills, but I have never seen someone board out a brainstorm in any matchup. Yeah, it's not a thing. <laughs> or really play blue without brainstorms. Also not a... Th well, I, you know, there are people who play Merfolk. That's it. Is Brainstorm actually bad in Merfolk? I don't think anyone's actually tried Merfolk with Brainstorm, actually. Oh, someone's had to have tried it. I, I mean... I mean, it someone in the it's wrong, world but is probably it that has. wrong? I, like, I, would, I would be surprised. It's Brainstorm. Let's see Containment Priest here from Ben Friedman. Yeah, it's the beatdowns. That is... Yep, he does have three copies of that in his sideboard as well. Talked to a lot of people at the Grand Prix in New Jersey who said that every person I talked to was playing Containment Priest said it was the best card in their sideboard. It wasn't even close. They said it was completely absurd for them all day. Remember, it's not just good against Show and Tell and Reanimator. It gets Elves. It's good against... You can even put it in against Goblins. It stops their Aether Vial draws. Here's a Jace. I'm not sure how, this one, how much this one even matters. It's like container, yeah. what, container freeze. Why is this card at flash? Nobody knows. <laughs> like, it's already super good. Why does it get to blow you out, too? Like, this has got this. I mean, this is just has it, legacy staple written still, all yeah. over it. It'd still see play without flash. Yeah. yeah. It would just be like another hate bear, right? It would just be like Dahlia or Ethersworn Cannons or something. And now it's just like, oh, also, I just get to absolutely blow you out, too, if you, like, go for it and you're Wouldn't wrong. Wouldn't that be fun if Ethersworn Cannons had flash? That would just be. I would like that, actually. Oh, that'd be so yeah. miserable. It'd be, it wouldn't be the greatest right, Did experience. you play a spell this turn? Hold on. <laughs> yeah. In response to your spell, I'm going to play this Cannonist. <laughs> wow. My turn? Yeah. Probably not a good <laughs> idea for that to have flash. <laughs> not sure it is for Containment Priest either, but it does, and it's victorious. Ben Friedman going to win this match over Nathan Moneymaker, two games to zero. His take on Jeskai Stoneblade has moved on to seven and one, and for Ben, with any luck, he's able to draw in to the elimination rounds next round. We'll see. Yeah.